Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. Today's the second upload of the day, so if you didn't see the mock draft from earlier, after you watch this video, go watch that. So today is a buy or sell fourth round ADP video. Pretty much what this means is will I buy or sell a player at their draft current draft position in the fourth round? Well pretty much what that also means is will I draft them? Or will I not draft them? Am I going to draft or avoid those kind of players? My Twitter is on the screen, at Notorious Fantasy. Follow that if you'd like. So let's get right into the video. So, at the first pick in the fourth round, the 401, we currently have Carrion Johnson. Carrion Johnson, in my opinion, is a buy in fantasy football this season. I really like Carrion Johnson. He is the upside, in my opinion, of being a top 10 fantasy football back. He is going to be someone who I target in every single draft at the end of the third round. I'm pulling the trigger on carry on, maybe even earlier than that in the third round. Would not go into the second round, but in the third round, I'm targeting carry on a lot. I really like him. Um, his coach, Matt Patricia, tells us, he calls me on the phone, he tells me that he thinks that carry on Johnson, they're going to run the hot hand. And uh, in my opinion, what he told me on the phone, he didn't tell me that on the phone, obviously, if you couldn't pick up that that's pretty much sarcastic, but he said that, he was going to run the hot hand to the, some reporters. The hot hand's obviously going to be carry on Johnson. It's not going to be that fat fuck, C.J. Anderson. So you're all good with carry on Johnson. He's going to be getting the ball hella times. He's going to be running it up the opponent's ass. He can catch the ball. They sold Theo Riddick, the backup, the pass-catching back. They said, hey, hit the road jack, and don't you come back, you pass-catching back. Get the fuck out of here. And um, they kicked him off the team. They didn't really kick him off the team. They just cut him. They said, get the fuck out of here. Fugazi. You know what I'm saying? And they now it's all the carry on Johnson so show just like it should be. So at the 402, we have rookie running back Josh Jacobs out of the Oakland football Raiders. At the 402, Josh Jacobs is a buy. Now, Josh Jacobs comes with some risk. He's a rookie. Wasn't much of a bell cow in college. Kind of risky. But he also is just going to be getting the ball an ass ton of times. Mr. Um, Mr. Chucky, a.k.a. Mr. Gruden. Head coach, going to be running the ball a lot with this guy. They're just going to give him all the opportunities. Sorry if that clapping scared you. It wasn't much of a clapping. It was more of a pounding. You know, he's going to be pounding the rock up the ass of the enemy. Their passing game is going to be so-so. Derek Carr, if he can throw the ball to Antonio Brown, keep him guessing. Josh Jacobs can run up in between the tackles, run the ball, get some yards, score some touchdowns. The Raiders will be better this year, obviously, with A.B., and I think Josh Jacobs is a solid option in the fourth round. I'm more interested in getting Jacobs as my if you I would not draft draft Josh Jacobs as my running back one. I'd rather get someone completely different as my running back one. But as the running back two or three, I'm pretty good with Josh Jacobs, and that's why he's a buy in my opinion. At the four oh three, we have Mr. Injury, Julian Edelman, the man who just got hurt a couple of just a week ago, but he's still a buy for me now. You got to know you're signing up for a guy who's not going to play all 16 pretty much with Julian Edelman. Now, typically, I preach safety, but a guy who's so safe in the game when he plays, when he plays those 13 out of your 16 games, he's very safe. You need to hope he's playing in your championship, but he's definitely going to fucking take you there when he's healthy. He's very safe in PPR or half PPR. He catches so many passes from Mr. Tom Brady himself every single game. And I do think he's pretty safe. And if you played all 16, this is a straight-up steal in the fourth round. So after the straight-up steal himself, Julian Edelman, at the 404 is Mr. David Montgomery, rookie running back out of the Chicago Bears, Chi-Town. So at the 404, David Montgomery, in my opinion, is a buy. Now, a lot of people are against David Montgomery because they don't think he has what it takes to be the running back one on that team. Now, I'm not sure if those people, what they're smoking, because I'd like some of it, because David Montgomery is the clear-cut running back one on the team. Tariq Cohen can't really run the ball too much. David Montgomery may not get the usage at the beginning of the season. They signed, I believe, Mike Davis to that team. He was the running back from Seattle. He can obviously run a bit. But I think David Montgomery, two, three, four weeks in, is going to be... The the slotted in the running back one gonna be getting hella points a lot of points i don't know why i've said hello so many times in this video because i'm hella fucking rad you know what i'm saying i'm all i'm all hip and shit but david montgomery he's gonna be in what jordan howard did last year except for he's better than jordan howard in my opinion played great in college you can go watch the highlights it's quite good not as good as reggie bush bush bush's highlights in college but david montgomery is gonna be pretty safe a couple weeks into the season 
even maybe week one in preseason. We'll see how much they use him, but he could he could end up being a pretty great asset on a pretty good offense on the Chicago Bears. At the 405, we have Brandon Cooks. Now Brandon Cooks is a sell. Now you might you might tell me, oh Nick, what are you doing? Brandon Cooks is good, and I agree that Brandon Cooks is good, but I think I would rather have another wide receiver on the Rams who's going a, a little bit later. If uh, Winky, winky, wink. If you know who's on the Rams, that is uh, just a bit later in this video. You can see that. Now, I think Brandon Cooks could end up being better than that guy, obviously. But I'd, I prefer to get the other guy, which is Robert Woods, if you haven't gotten the, that hint. So that's why I he's a sell. But if you want him, go ahead and pick him over Robert Woods. At the 406, we got Philip Lindsay. And that's another sell. Back-to-back -back sells in this video. Because Philip Lindsay, the running back, Denver um, Broncos... The Denver Broncos, that's the team. He is going to be someone who a lot of people love. He's a great story. His story of being undrafted, playing so great, making the Pro Bowl, all that shit. But you want to know what doesn't win you a championship? A fucking story. That story doesn't fucking matter when you're playing in your fantasy championship. And you're not making your fantasy championship, in my opinion, if you draft Philip Lindsay here. Philip Lindsay is going to play pretty good, I'd say, but not great. Now, I think his backup, Royce Freeman... F may not even end up being the backup, may end up being the starter. Just a few rounds later is where you get the true value. Now, he could be a guy, Royce Freeman, who I'm going to talk about in the other video in a couple days, so subscribe for that so you get that video. He's going to be the one you want. He's going to be running hello. He's going to be running the ball. He's a bigger than Philip Lindsay, and he's a guy a lot of people were hyped about last year. Didn't really put in too much too much into that because Philip Lindsay blew up. Philip Lindsay got hurt at the end of last year. He hurt his arm, I believe, and I think that this is the year where Royce Freeman breaks out, really takes the job from Philip Lindsay, and you're going to feel stupid drafting Philip Lindsay in the 406, in my opinion. So we got at the 407, we have Mr. Robert Woods, the guy I talked, spoke about just before when I was talking about Brandon Cooks. Now, at the 407, Robert Woods, I like a lot. He is going to get the most targets, in my opinion, on that team from the Rams. The Rams are going to be pretty just as good in the regular season as last year, even if they're slightly worse, Robert Woods is still going to be very safe. I talked about him in the mock draft earlier. He was a very safe option last year. He really put it on there, scoring a shit ton of points every single game. Very safe, 12, 13, 14, 15 points a game. And you felt very safe with him. If Robert Woods is your wide receiver too, I am very confident that your team is going to be pretty good. If you made other good picks in the draft and continue to draft well. At the 408, we have Mac Ingram. Baltimore Ravens running back. The worst running back, according to Pat Mayo. Fuck Mark Ingram at the 408 now. I don't want anything to do with this this backfield in Baltimore. I'd rather take Justice Hill in like the last round because maybe he'll become the running back one because Mark Ingram's not very good. I know they like running the, ro the ball a lot on the Ravens. I'd rather just pick the qu their quarterback, who's pretty much a running back, Lamar Jackson. I'm not all in on Mark Ingram. I think if he gets hurt, then if he gets hurt, then his job's just completely gone. They're not going to bring him, but they're going to just keep running Gus Edwards, the Gus Bus, all the Kenneth Dixon, all those kind of guys that are on the team. It's a brutal backfield there, and I don't really want much of Mark Ingram this season. Okay, at the 409, which is the next pick, I am good at math, Kenny Galladay. Now, Kenny Galladay is the Lions wide receiver one, and Kenny Galladay is a buy. I love Kenny Galladay. I think the Lions are going to turn it around this year a lot with Mr. Carrion, who I talked about earlier at the 401. I think they're going to run the ball a lot, but I think Kenny Galladay, they're going to be passing it. They have a good quarterback in Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford's thrown 5,000 yards a bunch of years in a row last year. He could not do it. He got hurt. Their team was in fucking shambles. They traded away Mr. Golden Tate, who is now suspended for the PEDs, bit of the steroid action for Mr. Golden Tate. Gold Tate has nothing to do with this. Kenny Galladay is going to be catching a bunch of balls. I really like him a lot. I think he's going to be pretty consistent in the touchdown. Score like eight or nine touchdowns. Maybe even get to that 10 mark. And as your wide receiver too, I'm pretty confident in Kenny Galladay in fantasy football in 2019. So at the 4-10, we have Chris Godwin. Now Chris Godwin, I like this guy a lot, but he's a sell here. Because I'd much rather get at the 4-11 Calvin Ridley much more. Because I'd rather get someone on a better offense, in my opinion. Now, I think Chris Gad Godwin will have a lot of value. Obviously, a lot of people, they like Chris Godwin. So you can go ahead and pick Chris Godwin right here at the 410. I'm not too opposed to it. He, he was pretty hard to decide because I do like him. But I'd rather get Calvin Ridley ahead of him, even though Calvin Ridley got hurt in practice. 
I'm more in on Calvin Ridley than Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin's going to be scoring the touchdown. He's going to be getting a bunch of passes on the team. But I think I would rather get Calvin Ridley. So for that reason, he's a sell. Now, I may have just spoke like he was a buy because he is kind of a buy. He's kind of a sell. You can't have all buys in the video. He's a sell. But I still do like him. If he fell into the fifth round, I'd happily take him. And that may be where he ends up in your draft. So we're going to go because a lot of quarterbacks are going to be going earlier before the 412. Andrew Luck is the second one quarterback I speak about in the current ADP videos. So at the 411, Calvin Ridley, I said he's a buy. He got hurt. I think he's going to be fine. He's going to be all good for week one, in my opinion, I think. And I think that he is going to be improved from last year. Last year... He played a bunch of great games. He was also pretty inconsistent. He'd be scoring. I'm pretty sure he was a guy who would score like 17, 18 points. They, Julio wasn't even being covered by the cornerback one in certain games. Calvin Ridley was covered by him because of how good Calvin Ridley was. But I do believe that Calvin Ridley is going to do even better this year, be more consistent, and I like him a lot at the 411 wide receiver from the Falcons, if I didn't say that already. At the 412, we have Mr. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is a sell. I don't like drafting quarterbacks inside the first four rounds. That's why Mahomes was a sell. That's why Luck is a sell. I would not touch them that high. I'd rather get Rodgers, in my opinion. Rodgers is better than Luck, in my opinion, in fantasy. So I wouldn't I wouldn't take Rodgers here at the 412 either. But that, with that being said, I just don't want a quarterback inside the first four rounds. I typically like to go in the sixth or seventh round or just wait late and select a guy like Dak later who will be obviously one of these videos. I made a sleeper video on Dak. I like Dak a lot. But Luck is a guy who obviously he'll probably do pretty good in fantasy, but I cannot personally pull the trigger at the 412 on a quarterback who's going to be probably be top five in fantasy. I just can't do it. I don't, I don't like doing that. But that's just my opinion. So thank you guys all for watching the video. Please click the subscribe button. That's either on the screen now. It's going to be Johnny Manziel. Click on that. Click the notification bell. Or just go down below and click the subscribe button. I'm almost at 100 subscribers. Maybe even when you're watching this, I hit 100. So thank you guys all for watching all these videos. It, it means a whole lot to me. And I hope you guys have a great goddamn day. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's double upload, triple upload. Who fucking knows? Have a great day, guys. I love you.